Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all doing well. In this week's episode, we're going to be using the 16 to 35 again. Well, we also might use the 7200, but if you caught last week's episode or the last episode I did about composition, we talked about taking much better shots with your wide angle lens. This week, however, we're going to be using the probably the 35 side of our wide angle lens. We're going to be much closer to our subject. I'm here in Blue Rocks, Nova Scotia, and as you guessed it, it is famous for blue rocks around the bay here. But what's really cool is they, the way the geological formations are on these rocks and the way they've split from each other creates a lot of interesting patterns. On top of that, you add in these little orange algae or moss or something that grows on them. I should probably figure out what that is by the end of this video, but it creates these really contrasty colors as well. So we're about an hour from sunset, so we're gonna go walk around. So sit back, relax, we're gonna find some shots, we're gonna talk about some compositions, and most of all, you should walk away learning some really cool patterns and shadow techniques for your own minimal shots. Let's go. our first composition here. It's this really simple scene. But what I did is I just walked out on this rock and I've walked on quite a few rocks. And what I'm looking for is major, majorly just two different things. One, it could be patterns in the rocks, uh, the way that the lines are breaking off in the rocks or the shadows that they're creating. Another one is color. So it could be the colors of the rocks. Sometimes the rocks have more white on them. Some are purple, like we might go over here during blue hour and shoot some blue and purple rocks. And I'm also looking for this that algae, that yellow and orange algae. It's lichen. Kind of like you could like and subscribe to this channel down below. I'll be here all week. So I'm looking for lines in my image. Those are creating shadows and stuff like that. I'm looking for lines in the rocks that are creating patterns, but I'm also looking at colors. And the reason that this particular composition caught my eye is a mixture of things. We have a bunch of vertical lines through the image and it's actually more of a gray tone rather than a blue tone. What I'm standing on right here is blue, and this is a bit lighter color, so those blue tones aren't coming through, but what I really caught my eye, or what I really liked, is that these plants right here are casting shadows diagonally across our image. And what I'm doing is you can tell that there's some flowers around here, so I'm actually getting as close as I can to cut out a lot of that foliage on the left and right side, and then you can see these shadows that are being cast by these plants over here. And it's perfect because the sun is casting these shadows almost perfectly diagonal through my image while also having these lines that come up and down in the image and then also getting these colors and textures. It's a really great image because it has a lot of great abstract elements to it. It's got textures, it's got colors, it's got shadows. And I really, really like this image. It's a great first image for the sunset. And uh, yeah, here it is. Hope you enjoy. What's Okay, so something I failed to mention about that image really quick that you might be interested in is the settings or how I'm shooting it, because I do think it's not intuitive. I am using a polarizer. That polarizer can take out just a touch of reflections and add some more saturation to the colors that are already in the image. It really helps, but it is going to slow your shutter speed down. Typically, I'm just hand-holding most of these shots. I'm not trying to use a tripod, because a lot of the times I'm just walking around and trying to capture all these patterns in the rocks, and I don't want to fiddle about with a tripod. But your aperture is important because unless you're on a very flat plane, which a lot of the times I am, but those edges in the corners when I'm closer up with my 16 to 35 still need to be in focus. So I'm not stopping down all the way to F4 a lot of the times. I'm trying to keep my aperture at F8 or higher, which means that I am boosting up my ISO as long as my shutter speed is fast enough so that you know camera shake in my hands isn't affecting the image. If I find an image I really, really love and it's not very bright out, I will get the tripod out and shoot it that way but I really don't wanna mess with moving it about and stuff like that for all of these little detailed shots. The last thing is in that particular image, when I am trying to capture the shadows, my shutter speed mattered because there was wind and those shadows aren't gonna be as sharp if my shutter speed is too slow. So the images I took when there was a shadow, I believe were at ISO 400 and 1 200th of a second shutter speed. I don't really remember. I put them on the screen when they showed them to you though, but that is how I shot the image. 
things to think about when you're shooting this stuff. Most importantly, shutter speed is less important as long as you are, you know, holding your camera steady. And more important is keeping your aperture at a higher rate because like I said, uh, things will look out of focus and you don't want them to be out of focus on the edges of the screen because you want everything to have that nice, crisp texture detail. I wanted to mention that you have to be extra careful with when you're shooting rocks and patterns like this is to make sure the plane of your lens is at the same plane as the rock. What I mean by that is if I'm shooting here, I don't want to be shooting this way or this way. I want to be lined up perfectly with the rock because if I don't do that, what's going to happen is the top or the bottom of the image is going to be out of focus pretty much even if I'm shooting at a high aperture, obviously barring if you're focus stacking or something like that but it really makes it easier if you try to just get your plane of field correct to line up parallel with the top of your, your lens here, almost like you're just gonna set it on the ground and shoot it that way. Because what'll end up happening is what a lot of times people would walk up to this rock and they would just shoot it this way, diagonally, straight on. And that's just gonna cause your image to be out of focus at certain spots. I fell victim to this myself sometimes. And really it's just about being patient, finding the shot you want, getting close to it, composing your image, and uh, getting everything in focus, like we talked about with getting your aperture, uh, hopefully above f8, higher if you can, and then uh, not being as lazy as I am right now, using a tripod maybe, so. Something you'll notice is the sun is setting right behind me, but it's being blocked by some clouds, but also a tree. So what ends up happening is some of this light gets dappled and it creates this even more pleasing light as the sun sets. What's important about the sunset light is that it creates more color in my image and less contrast sometimes. Right now I'm getting less contrast, but earlier when I was shooting the uh, shot with the shadows, there's less golden light and just more contrasted light. And what happens during golden hour, obviously, is the light turns more gold if we get a sunset, but what that affects in my image is that it creates the, the golden light that's on this algae pops more, but it also contrasts better with these blue rocks. And by contrasting from the blue rocks, it makes the rocks stand out more. So earlier when my image was less golden light, those colors in the blue rocks pop a little bit less. And now when I'm getting these nice shadows, nice golden light, the colors are popping even more. I shot this rock for almost an hour yesterday and I came back to it. I could literally just shoot this rock for this entire episode if I wanted to. There's so many cool patterns and lines and textures just on this rock alone that I could probably shoot multiple portfolio worthy shots given the right light. One thing that I did is by reviewing my images from yesterday, I've learned what worked and didn't work based off of the images that I took on this rock. So there's some shots that I thought were really great yesterday that I was like, oh, I can improve these by moving a little bit, by changing my aperture, by changing the angle of my image. And I was actually sh shooting with my 70 to 200 more yesterday, and I thought that it would be better to get a little bit closer and get a little bit more detail in my shots with my 16 to 35. So that's what we're doing. I'm gonna try to recreate some of the shots that I took yesterday with the improvements that I learned by reviewing my images, which is always a great tip, especially if you can come back to a spot, especially a spot that's as intricate like this, that you can just keep taking different images and uh, finding new patterns all on the same rock. So I'm gonna keep taking some images. The sun has almost set, so we don't have much time left for that light. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Here's some of the images that I end up finding from this rock. Enjoy.
meteor shower tonight. So I'm also gonna include that in this video. I'm not really gonna be able to film very much, but I just set up my camera, it's about 9.30. I took my blue hour shot of this nice reflection that I know you can't see right now. But it's this nice reflection with this little storage, boat storage house thing in the middle of this cove. And the Milky Way lines up perfectly right behind it. I have to wait an hour to shoot the Milky Way. Set up my camera, gonna go back in the car, watch some YouTube or something. Come back out here in an hour and tell, take our Milky Way shot. And then there's also a media shower, so that could be cool too. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> 